Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of Laws of Exponents. This is standard A.11b in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 8 of the 2021 released star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we need to find an equivalent expression, and it looks like it's pretty simple. We've just got that exponent to the 5 outside. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at our mathematics chart or our reference materials, if we look at our laws of exponents, we need to be able to recognize that we're actually taking a power of a power. So that's kind of the hardest part is trying to figure out which of these laws of exponents we need to apply. So this is a power of a power because it's what happens when you have a base, right? That's your big number, to an exponent, so a to the m power. Then you take that whole thing and you take it to another power. So you take the power of a power, a to the m to the n. So what the power of a power tells us to do is you keep that base, right, that big number, and you end up multiplying the two powers, so m times n. So let's take this expression right here, and I'm going to break it up into three different chunks. All right, we can distribute out that to the fifth power. It's going to be a little bit easier for us to see. So what I'm going to do is, let me rewrite it here so we can see it nice and big. So we've got that z to the fourth, and this whole thing, right, we're taking to the fifth. So watch me just, I'm going to take this x to the ninth. Then I'm going to take that and put it to the fifth. Then I'm going to take that y, take that to the fifth. Then I'm going to take this 2 to the fourth, or z to the fourth, looks like a 2. And then take that to the fifth. So you could distribute out that fifth exponent there to each of the terms separately. And as long as you multiply them back together, it's the exact same thing. Now it's a little bit easier to deal with because now I've got each of these bases separated. So I've got this x to the ninth to the fifth. Well, that's my power of a power, right? So that's just going to end up being x to the, and then I'm going to take my 9 times 5, right? You keep your base, the big number, then you multiply the 9 times the 5, and so that is going to get you, I'm just going to keep moving it down like this, x to the 45, which is huge, but that's fine. We took our x to the 9, we took that to the 5th power, so it's 9 times 5. So right now I'm looking at h, and I'm looking at j already, because look at what f and g are doing. How do you get 14? You did 9 plus 5. That's what happens when you do product of power, but they're adding right there. Okay, so let's do this y. There's no exponent next to the y, but you know what? If we want to be technical, we can say it's y to the 1, right? So y to the 1 times 5, because anything to the 1 power is just itself, but it ends up just being y to the 5th, okay? So now I'm looking and see, look at this h. h has got y, but there's no exponent next to that y. So that y to the fifth right there is looking good on j. And then we've got this z finally, okay? So it's z to the, I'm going to take both exponents, multiply them, 4 times 5. And that's going to end up being z to the 20th. Now I've kind of spread them out but you can all see it as one big expression now. And I've got my z to the 20th down there, so yeah, j is looking pretty good. So really the only difference between h and j is that this, this y misses the 5, and you notice how they get the 9 here for f and g. They get the 9 because they ended up adding the 4 plus 5, but you need to multiply the 4 times 5 because it's power of a power. You only add them if it would be like z to the fourth times z to the fifth. Then you would add the four and five as a product of powers. But my answer here is going to be j.